I'm going to take you on a 50-year journey this morning, which is appropriate as I sit somewhere in my 50s. I'm insisting in my early 50s. Um, and in that sense, that 50-year journey around this particular topic I want to consider takes us back to 1966. I'm going to Route 66, I'm going to 1966, and in 66 I'm going to the great Robbins report on higher education. And in 66 Robbins was asked to look at what is higher education for? And I'm going to ask you that question in terms of what is a university for, or how do you create a university, or what is a university about, and how does um, innovating and integrating and educating link to what a university is for and challenge you in terms of your concepts of university and what it is we're trying to achieve here in Bolton in this great university. So let's go back to 66, let's take ourselves just 50 years, 51 in fact years, uh, back to when Lord Robbins was asked to define the essence of a university in the United Kingdom. And Robbins said that universities were about, they were about the creation, the preservation and the dissemination of something. What was that something? Well, of course, that something was knowledge. So it was about creating, it was about preserving, and it was about disseminating knowledge. And a university, therefore, and the new great white tile universities, the white heat technology universities of the 60s, were developed, the, uh, the, the Bradfords and the Yorks and the Keels and the Warwicks were all created to create preserve and disseminate knowledge. Creating, research, creating knowledge, of course, was around the actual fundamental blue skies thinking of research. What is, what is new, creative, innovative? What, let's think the unthinkable. Let's do what I'm going to ask you to do today and think the unthinkable and indeed challenge Robbins from 66 to something new today. Indeed, the motive for going forward for universities today may well be uh, innovate, integrate and educate as opposed to, to create, preserve and disseminate knowledge. So let's have a look at what Robbins was saying. What he was saying was that in creation of knowledge, uh, what he was saying was that blue skies research, I innovative new thinking, you know, the essence in some ways uh, of the PhD, the contribution of new things, new ideas, new information, new interpretations, new ways of applying things. And then we move on of course to once you've created it, you have to preserve it. And you can preserve it in a number of ways, but the obvious preservation of it is committing it to writing, to committing it to learned scholar journals and books, um, and, and uh, ultimately that will come to the preservation moment. But in terms of the, um, the um, sorry, I'm on preservation, aren't I, Patrick? Yeah. Um, the, uh, the preservation of knowledge is providing a repository uh, of, of that knowledge, um, whether it be uh, written or archiving, archiving that knowledge or interneting that knowledge today. And then, of course, the dissemination of knowledge comes to the end of the spectrum that we sit at today that often universities are judged on, which is around, um, around uh, teaching, disseminating that knowledge, publishing and getting it out there, having committed it to record in terms of preserving it, publishing and getting it out there, but also uh, teaching students and making sure that students are well aware of that knowledge that's been created. Now, is that enough? You know, Robbins was the seminal work on universities, but is it enough? today. And you then have to move across to ask about how those new universities did in society uh, and how they developed. And you have to look at someone called Burton Clark at UCLA, Los Angeles, who started to look in the 80s at the work of those universities that developed in the 60s and started to look at the most successful universities in, in, uh, in, in Europe, in fact, in his particular study, and ask what was it about those universities that had made them successful and how were they measured as being successful. And of course we then enter that great debate of the university league table, valid or not, relevant or not, measuring the right things or not, what is a university for? Where on that league table does the creation of knowledge come? Well, perhaps it comes in the research element. Uh, where does the preservation of knowledge come? Well, perhaps it comes in the academic infrastructure. Um, and where does the dissemination of knowledge come? Well, perhaps that comes in the, the teaching, the, uh, the view of the student quality of teaching. So perhaps those tables do, in that sense, start to span the, the knowledge of, of Robbins. But of course, along came Higher Education Limited. Warwick Limited was the classic example of it, challenged by the academics in the late 70s and early 80s as being too commercial, too highly focused on making a university for profit, a university for business, a university for industry, because there was no mention in that early description of business or industry. And then you had these universities reaching out to companies saying we can do applied research, we can do in-company research, we can do income generation, we can even ultimately whiz forward a few years and start to charge fees for the things that we sell, that's to say our courses. 
And there was a, therefore a, a remarkable corruption, wasn't there, in this process of this purest idea of an organization for the purposes of creating and preserving and disseminating knowledge. And today's position, or a position that moves a few years on into the 80s and 90s, when people like uh, Warwick and York were starting to say, albeit in a slightly divergent way in those two universities, they were starting to say, well, actually, um, this is about connecting to business and industry, applying it. It's about employability. No mention in Robbins's notion of employability or usefulness. You know, no reference to the idea that a university might actually be some use to the student who might go to it, who might then ultimately succeed in employment and add to national wealth and add to wealth creation. But no, what you had is a situation where you've got this purist idea, and I'll come back to why knowledge perhaps isn't the right thing to be focusing on in what is a university for, what is higher education for, in a minute. Notice that knowledge might not be the thing that we want to focus on for a university. That'll give you some thought for the day, wouldn't it, in terms of perhaps it isn't about knowledge at all. Um, it, maybe it's about the application of that knowledge. Maybe it's about actually wisdom. It's about judgment. It's about interpretation. It's about understanding. It's about application. Knowledge itself, and certainly information itself, is out there an awful lot now in the internet. It's available at all times. Remember when Robbins was writing, Information was not freely available. Knowledge was not actually as freely available as it is today. Now, this is being live streamed, no doubt, all over the world and uh, contributing to an understanding of issues, perhaps. But it wasn't freely available in the Robbins era in the 60s. Uh, in the, in the 60s. And so you have this situation where the question arises now is, is a university for something else today rather than what it was when it started, because knowledge is available anywhere. The internet is the university that Robbins was considering, where new knowledge was created, and it's, and it's preserved, and it's disseminated. So the internet became the world's university in that sense. So what do the universities become? Well, they become areas, perhaps, where people do things that we're talking about today. They, they innovate, and they integrate, and they educate, because they're a place, they're a space and a place. And in that sense, a university isn't what Robbins described at all, but it's actually a place and a space for innovation and for creativity and for the development of challenge of new ideas. So actually TEDx is dead center. We are actually right on the red spot in terms of being at the right place for universities now. The students involved in the development of this provision are about what universities might well be seen to be for for the next 50 years. And of course they then apply that knowledge and apply that research and apply that uh, understanding, innovation, creativity to a context which is about wealth creation. And that wealth creation then spreads across, you'll not be surprised as an economist, I argue that wealth creation is critical to the development of society, to the development of humanity, to the development of resource acquisition and exploitation for the whole of the, uh, the, the benefit of the population of the world. So what are universities for then? Well, maybe they're for more than knowledge, maybe they're for more than wisdom. Maybe they're about really pushing the boundaries of interpretive understanding. Maybe they're about challenge they must be, surely, about, about challenge. And they must be, or are they, institutions? Are they places, are they spaces, or are they institutions? We had a situation where uh, Burton Clark was saying that the way that universities, the great universities, have developed in this country over the last 50 years, Warwick is 50 years old, it's one of the most successful universities by most people's measure, from start-up in the 60s to 50 years old last year. It's, it's a perfect 50-year journey. And of course, willful institution building took place there to create an institution. And here in Bolton, we're engaging in willful institution building. It's neither accidental nor incidental, but about creating a strong institution to enable those people participating in that institution to grow, to develop, to innovate, to integrate, and by our process to educate in terms of that interpretation of knowledge and understanding. But willful institutions in places require the development of place. So what I'm saying here about the university that we're in is that we're trying to develop an institution that does the things that I've described in terms of innovation and creativity and education, but also does it in a way that creates a sense of place, a sense of town, a sense of, a sense of gown, the connectivity between where we are. We are not in a vacuum. We are not dropped in the middle of a field like Warwick was. We're actually right in the center of a community, a community who don't understand what a university is. They haven't had one before. Fifteen years ago, this town didn't have a university. This town had an institute of higher education that was bursting to become a university, but wasn't one. 
and therefore you have to work on this process, is my uh, approach of linking the town with the gown to create an environment, a space and a place where people understand that we're more than about creating knowledge. We're about connecting with communities. We're about integrating with the society that we're in. We're about shaping and changing that society. We are going to make Bolton and Greater Manchester different by what we do. The things that you, our students, and our communities engage in will massively change this community. Why should you believe that? Can you believe that? Well, it took them 800 years, but look at Cambridge. The town or city of Cambridge wouldn't be anything without its university. Imagine Cambridge or Oxford without their universities. And I'm going to suggest to you, if you take this 50 years on from now, imagine Bolton without its university. As we move into Le Mans Crescent, you know, not surprising I take this as a really good advertising opportunity for the strategy of the university, but not often do people <coughs> listen to me around here. So <laughs> I take this as an advertising opportunity. We'll have Le Mans Crescent by the town hall. We've just acquired it. The student village developing behind it. The creation of... Um, spaces, flexible spaces for the community and students to live together, um, to create cafe culture, to create that drop-in situation where an innovative small um, high-tech or innovative creative company can have a studio and then drop in downstairs to cafe culture and talk with students who are on courses. And then a campus that is re resourced with high-tech facilities, new buildings, new facilities and equipment that enable students to access the best available. The National New Motorsport Centre, the STEM Centre, the, um, uh, the dental technologies facilities, the facilities that we offer in terms of Bolton 1 and the health provision, and so on and so on, to create niche-based provision of the very highest quality. Because, of course, an institution can't be everything to everybody and do everything <coughs> well. It has to specialise. <coughs> But in that specialisation runs one common theme, which is about educate in this university. Educate being the teaching intensive agenda informed by Robbins's traditional notion of research, but not driven by Robbins's original notion of research. You see, for Robbins, you couldn't be a university unless you created knowledge and then preserved it and disseminated it. For us, the argument today, 50 years on, will be maybe we can be a university by being teaching intensive by focusing on educating, focusing on creativity, focusing on innovation, focusing on the, the topics of this particular conference, and using that as the driving central thread or force that holds together the community that will change the society that we operate in uh, here in Bolton. Because people can understand the tangible uh, requirement of a university teaches students. And we do it rather well. The Complete University Guide yesterday said that we were 36 in the UK out of 129 universities for our student satisfaction, particularly with teaching. 36. We actually sat side by side because I think 35th on that with the same score. Oddly enough, why they were 35th and we were 36th with the same score, I don't understand. But, and we had a B and they had a C. That's to say they were Cambridge and we were Bolton. So there we sit side by side with an 800-year-old university, Bolton and Cambridge, with the same score for satisfaction with the student experience and teaching. And that's taken them 800 years. What have they been doing? And it's taken us about 10 or 12 in terms of our university to get to that position where our students are highly satisfied with what they receive. But, of course, on the league table around research, we're well down because we're not a Robbins University. We're not a research intensive. We're not about creating knowledge. We're about applying, we're about integrating that information, innovating with that information, and educating with that information, the very theme of this particular conference. So, how do I want to bring this, this set of thoughts together? I want to suggest to you that you want to think about what is a university of today? Is a university today about knowledge, or is it about place, is it about people, is it about applicability? And if it is about those things, where does knowledge sit in this? Is Robbins outmoded? Um, and in terms of building and developing a university, is it wrong for those research intensive to remain research intensive? Are they barking up the long, wrong, long-term strategic tree? Have Cambridge and Oxford missed the very point? The research intensive Russell groups who are hanging on to some historic notion of the past? And is that why London School of Economics and King's College London are in the bottom ten in the country for student perception of their views of teaching? Because they've lost the plot in a modern world. Whereas institutions like ours are right on the money. We're on the message around what it is to be a modern, forward-looking, creative, 
willfully built institution linking the town and the gown together in a way that creates space for students to do what students can do best, to create, to innovate, and on our part, uh, to educate. So I'll leave you with that thought about what is a university for. Is it about that traditional notion, or is it about something different? Are we doing the right thing in attempting willful institution building? Are we doing the right thing turning our face against those research intensives? You know, in 25 years or 50 years, will someone be standing here saying, you know, what universities are about? It's about teaching. It's about educating. It's about innovating. It's about using the knowledge that's freely and widely available across the internet. Why try and, try and create more knowledge in a local pocket when there's far more world knowledge and information available you can draw on and innovate and integrate rather than just simply create. So I'll conclude with the thought that Robbins, perhaps, of his time was right, but times have changed, times have moved on, and that a modern creative university is something completely different to the notion of Oxford and Cambridge, the dinosaurs that are waiting to die. Thank you for listening.